the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Very powerful revelation. Ligata paruti si ala balara balara bush. Manda prakato sata nekato si ala balara bakash. Rapakato sodo pretege di balara bakatush. Ligata paruti si ala balara balara bush. Manda prakato sata nekato si ala balara bakash. Rekete ko sada balara bash. Thank you for the abundance of your word. Li paruto suta paruti si. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a few minutes. You will get up again. Just a few minutes. Very powerful revelation. I don't know how many of you were listening to what Jimmy was sharing. Amazing revelation. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our eyes and praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Tonight I'm sharing about God's wealth transfer agenda. Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Read with me. One, two, read. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower. Please talk to me. The rich rule it over the poor. It didn't say the rich man. The rich anything rules over the poor anything. And the borrower is servant to the lender. The borrower remains a servant. To the lender is an ordinance as far as this earth is concerned that one of the ways satan makes slaves is to hijack the economy of the earth listen carefully the bible says a borrower is servant to the lender provided you are the one at the other end to receive regardless of who and what you think you are it says you remain a slave there is a conspiracy listen carefully there is a conspiracy upon the earth and that conspiracy like Jimmy was sharing is a strategy by the kingdom of darkness remember i taught you that dominion happens through words through ideas through informations strongholds also get to men through words through ideas and information that is programmed to men that does something to them our loved ones are victims of this limitation the bible says where jimmy shared that a prophet of god notice satan did not come and say your generation must serve me he made sure something happened to them and in return the children who had potentials to be prophets were now going to be dragged into a system of servanthood there is a way satan keeps the seed the church our families in captivity using economy most people do not understand that wealth is warfare wealth is not about cars it's not about houses it's a contention for dominion the epicenter the corporate headquarters of dominion on earth is economy more than politics more than whatever it is 
the epicenter of dominion jesus taught us that when it comes to this there are only two masters on earth god and mammon not satan god and mammon and he said you must serve one of them in your lifetime so it's not a question of whether you want to serve or not you must serve one the only option you have is to choose god or mammon there is an agenda by the gates of hell to keep the people of god in poverty in penury in captivity this is not the issue of job this is not the issue of cars and houses and jeeps and no 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 it's an agenda because for as long listen carefully for as long as the body of christ remains poor and beggarly and struggling servitude satan will leave you praying in tongues he doesn't mind satan will leave you seeing your visions visions of the church being built visions of mission agencies that will never come to pass because whoever owns the resources makes the rules whoever owns the resources makes the rules i don't have time but i want to just give us just an introduction are we together the bible says in babylon something happened look at me that once upon a time a king said build an image use money to build that image not cement not block he said that image must be built with gold and he says everyone at the sound of the shofar everyone rich or poor if you are within that territory bow down to not me the stature that i have used money bow to the system that i have built he didn't say bow to me he said bow to the gold and there were certain gentlemen who said no we are not going to do this he said you will not do this when you hear the musicians when you hear everybody you bow down to that stature you must bow down it was 90 feet solid gold and the boys refused they said oh king we love you we respect you but when it comes to this one no we will not bow to you our god is able to save us but even if he does not deliver us oh king we will not do this it was a fight between gold and the loyalty that comes with it many people see the rule is this bow to that stature and then any living that's the condition that on earth if you will ever rise you must get to the point where you are forced by life to bow to that gold stature so you can be coming to church and someone calls you and says where are you you say I, i'm leading prayer someone say what nonsense prayer you better rush and come quickly and you bow to the stature you have to run to respond because your daily bread satan does not have to come and stop you he just stops the system of supply notice that everyone in the bible who demonstrated a level of influence with finances most of them either operated the covenant of god or they were satanic and diabolic are we together wealth and prosperity played a role in the resurrection the salvation the bible says jesus was on the cross prophecy said he would be in a virgin tomb that was where resurrection had to happen but every preacher every well we shall finish their ministry at the cross nobody had the access to continue only a man of influence called joseph of arimathea he used his influence and went to caesar and said give me the body of this one i have a tomb already and they took his body and put in the tomb many of you did not realize that jesus had to raise up from the grave that's where that scripture now becomes complete oh grave where is thy sting oh death you know oh grave where is thy sting oh death you know where is thy victory and so on and so forth there is an indoctrination and satan has used preachers to bring this indoctrination let me tell you this you see i've said it again correcting the body of christ in itself is a ministry is an office not every preacher not every spiritual man has the anointing to correct the body the mistakes and the imbalances stem from people who believe that they are good observers 
and in a bit to balance what they call carnality and materialism they have become prey for satan most people who have preached against wealth are people who are secretly frustrated by the inability of understanding the system to make it happen so to excuse that frustration they carve out a theology that keeps people bound zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 Satan took Jesus to a high mountain, showed him the glories of the earth, right? Where the scripture we shared the day before yesterday, and he says, all of this, he called it power, has been given to me. Cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, my cities, my influence, my ideas will through the instrumentality of prosperity, not just prayers, not just fasting my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the lord shall comfort zion there is there is an indoctrination and you know sometimes i stand and i watch people and sometimes i literally fight tears because it's amazing how many well believing christians have fallen prey to this is a transgenerational indoctrination are we together now it, it is it has come it has become a stronghold we have become victims of babylon we dance by her tune that she goddess that is upon a horse coordinates our, our activity they use money to tell you when to pray they use money to tell you when to marry they use money to tell you when to come out of a house. They use money to tell you what geographic location you should be. And you are helpless because the rich will always rule over the poor. Every time. Listen. The Bible gives us a mystery. That in Egypt, the people were building as slaves. Remember, God's covenant people, they were building. And then the Bible says the Egyptians provided straw. So there was limited supply. The people just needed to do the whole building. And then the moment God began to speak to them about freedom, notice when they went to Pharaoh, Moses went to Pharaoh on their behalf and said, Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. Pharaoh said, I know what is wrong. Economy. You are having some level of convenience. That's why you even have time to hear God. He says, stop giving them straw. You will now go and look for the straw by yourself. And the moment they looked for the straw, they, start, they started shouting to Moses, Moses, don't go again. Just leave us here. Satan uses economy to keep people away from God. Understand this. Because of poverty, there are marriages that are the will of God that has, have refused to happen. Simply because the requisite resources that can help the individuals have not been there. Because of this there are books that should be written there are prophecies that nations should hear there are programs there are men and women with strange anointings upon the soil of this nation that deserve to be here be heard by the world do you know how much it takes um hey Jimmy, do you know how much it takes to pay for a tv program per month just to host a television station on the average not hd 13 million per month yet there are football clubs that have six of them they have their stadium they have everything why because they belong to the kings of the earth so they don't charge them tribute all that money comes from us we are the ones who give it and then we become slaves have you noticed that the greatest attack in your life will come in the area of your finances if you have not noticed keep watching satan does not have a problem with your education if he tries to stop you from loving god and it looks like he can't get it he will be waiting for you he knows one day you will have children he knows one day school fees will come just because he's allowing you with your 200 naira to be able to eat every day a day will come you will not be able to pray not because anybody changed you satan will squeeze you to a point where you will have to bow notice how many young people graduate with zeal and power they love god they have been refined for four five years look at those people three years later they are hardly christians again 
are we together people who will vow and tell you i will never collect bribe three years later they are at the heart of it notice how many people cannot sleep and it's money that is causing it it's an attachment to money i just checked and i discovered that seven hundred thousand is missing in this house and i can't sleep again it's a sign that i'm a slave to it it's a sign that i serve it i made up my mind under god that i will never serve money with my life i made up my mind that i will serve god and money will serve me are we together now if you don't listen to what i'm telling you you will be surprised to see that in the distant future brothers and sisters do you know this is why many of our parents you talk to them about evangelism they look at you and laugh they say sit down let me tell you a story in 1975 i was the president of one group as you all these things you are doing i did it ask them daddy at what point did you leave god it will tell you about something that happened in 1989 that made him vow he would never follow god again my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad i have the privilege of talking with ministers do you know that one of the greatest frustrations of pastors right now is not prayer is finances when i talk with pastors you would think they are going to ask me secrets of the anointing and say man of god how do you do it you sit down and say man of god please please what how are you doing this thing because right now as we are sitting and all of a sudden when a revival is about to break forth in the auditorium that the ministry is using the landlord will say i've come up with a new policy the price has been doubled because you people make noise and because you make noise we are doubling the price if you cannot do it there is a club somewhere that wants to come and start using it and they are willing to give us six months advance and here comes the pastor with all his anointing together with the elders tongue talking according to the vision they saw themselves till december in that place but money is about to cancel a vision if i ask all of you to write your prayer request right now on behalf of you and your family and i carry it and read it over 80 percent of it will be financial issues do you know what it means for a child to go to the father or mother and say daddy i'm ready to go to school for a student and the father says what do you want me to do That's why many men are angry brothers and sisters it looks like there is an age range men get to that they don't laugh again because the reality of the frustration no matter what you do even if it's their birthday while you are celebrating them they are distracted they've forgotten they're they are even in that place it's a strategy imagine now that because of my financial needs i now cook up a revelation you see when you see men of god manipulating people don't be too quick to judge i'm not justifying it but it's the reality are we together and so a man of god is preaching and here are the children they are school fees and he has to look for a way so he takes advantage of the gift of god and says pastor alpha i saw five million in your account do something quickly come and give me two million otherwise a course is following you next week he knows he's lying but the reality of the poverty will not allow him to repent and say i'm just joking he's not joking he's waiting for that money if that money comes he will collect it that's why many sisters are running away from married men of god the devil didn't say stop marrying them the devil just said let me make a specimen with a man of god and rubbish the integrity of the anointing in the face of finances and when they just go to the parents and say look i'm a man of god say no 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 we can worship at your church we can be kingdom financiers but no way it's a strategy listen to what i'm telling you in the days that will come let me tell you the church the family and the individuals that are financially bankrupt will be slaves they will do you know there are certain levels of revelations you cannot have until you are prosperous just allow me to prove it to you i hope you know that out of everybody in egypt it was the king that god revealed the famine that was going to come the revelation of the famine came to the king not because he was born again he was the one in the position to create help it's in your bible when pharaoh was in egypt 
and Joseph was there who had the dream in the night why didn't God show Joseph directly it would have been useless because the economic empowerment to effect what the dream meant was not there there is a position that if you do not rise you can God cannot show you what he's doing it's not just prayer and fasting there is an economic position where God can now say son I see the enemy bringing diseases to kill children he shows you because the capacity to stop it is there pharaoh goes to sleep in the night and god bypasses joseph god bypasses somebody he gave a gift to and goes to the one who has the position to solve the problem and shows him the dream and the, and he gets up he never said it's a lie it's true that dream came from god but it came to a man that had substance no wonder we are not seeing anything in church because it makes no difference there's no point God showing you who is dying because you will only pray about it. Oh God, won't you help them? Whereas they are crying. Remember Apostle James taught us and said, don't see somebody hungry and tell him, I bid you God speak. Go in peace. Hmm. There are dimensions of instructions that cannot come to you. So the reward also cannot come to you because there is no capacity. There is a tragedy that the body of Christ must be delivered from. You open your mouth to speak about wealth and prosperity and the harsh criticisms that come from pastors, that come from people. I'm not talking of all this money mongering, I'm going to gather 10 cars. This agenda is not about cars and houses. It's about kingdom advance. It's about bringing supplies. How many mission agencies do you see? They will, you see them looking hungry, looking like whatever it is. You go to the mission fields and watch the way missionaries suffer as if they are dying. Their wives and children are there. Yet a prostitute, a prostitute will sleep with an unbeliever and by the next morning she has become a millionaire. That million is the prayer point of that missionary. And then you tell me since I was young, now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken. That's why when we raise these songs in church, members are angry while they listen to us. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. There is a dimension of kingdom wealth. As we are speaking now, Koinonia is connected to over 45 nations of the world. It's not just with tongues they are listening to. Brothers and sisters, there is nobody that has sold one message. We would have made hundreds of millions of naira from sales. Most ministries, it's not an insult, but most ministries use sales as a system of generating revenue. It's a sacrifice that said, God said we should do in order to communicate Christ to a generation. But it takes not just obedience, but capacity to make it happen. For years, as we are standing right now, there are security people outside. Every koinonia service, riot or no riot, there are securities, all, and all of them are paid. There are buses after the service. We've done this for years. There's not been a single time that we say stop because there was no money. Brothers and sisters, the convenience you receive serving God, there is a role that kingdom wealth played in it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the reason why we do not need to play any gimmicks on you. And say do this bring this bring that bring this this is the pressure that you see on preachers they announce their birthdays months before the time to force members to start preparing because the man of god is hoping that he can cash in at that time and at least they can give him something imagine that i put pressure on you now and say all of you buy me a car imagine that i put pressure on you think how i destroy your salvation think how i destroy your passion for god have you seen crusades now a man of god will preach a sound message call sinners that are helpless but because of financial constraint at the end of a sound crusade when you should even be helping them with resources you now say well uh, before i end john chapter 5 verse 11 
five dollars and eleven cents i want to cook. what you look at how you ruin something that is a blessing and a sinner that should love god said you see them these are the thieves again and they find their way and go back and die and go to hell are you hearing what i'm saying we're well, going to pray i made a covenant with myself that me and poverty i waved it goodbye it waved me back i have no business with it listen regardless of where you are the dynamics and other things we will teach it subsequently we have there are teachings tonight is not just tonight is to expose you that this finance thing is warfare warfare i have had encounters in my life i've had encounters with angels i've had encounters with demons but the fiercest encounter in my life came with the spirit i've shared it with you you've heard me say it, that i was praying and all of a sudden i had a vision and i saw an entity looking like a sea creature the eyes were as big as a human head and the tail was a serpent the tail had its own life aside from the body and he was looking at me red fierce eyes and all he said is so you think you can bring god's people into abundance it was not so you think you are getting people filled with the holy ghost when you are healed you are healed for yourself when you are saved you are saved for yourself it's only finances that can get to others satan prefers a healthy church working in signs and wonders than a church that is prosperous are we together hmm. i was told there was a family here sadly not too far from us that the house caught fire was it day before yesterday and burnt everything I can almost bet you many Christians have gone to greet them now and say well done sir God bless you I saw in a vision that God will restore all things and then they move and leave the person if you see the lady in that house now getting into prostitution next week people believers will be the first to run their mouth and say what is all that there is no means to even say please take 10 naira for the sake of the children and it's not that you don't have the heart satan knows you have the heart so he will never allow the money get to you what is there for the body of christ to help and support this family and say look this is what we have 10 000 20 000 and say look we may not give you everything but at least let you don't sleep hungry must it be a special charity fund that's how broke we are what is special about it as i'm speaking to you right now right now do you know how much footballers get in a week if a church gets that they will finish their headquarters no more prayer the only prayer is fasting and saying souls how bad I once saw a young boy or a girl i don't know the mother came after koinonia i looked at the baby adorable baby but the baby was born with a many maybe they are even here listening to me with a serious condition a jimmy and for the rest of that the child is now eight weeks but the child was completely paralyzed and he had an acute state of pneumonia that child was on his way dying he was not just depending on prayer and miracles and the mother came they've done their best but the woman was watching her child die i said this is not the issue of prayer i asked them to come i i could not sleep i kept seeing the child's face all over the house and i had to send one of the protocol people i said bring this child when they brought this child from shika six weeks old the child was just gasping how much does it take to take this boy to surgery and give the boy a chance to live must it be like mephibosheth We're talking about resources with vision resources that are weapons you don't just use tongues money is a weapon you can send it send it to save souls he said how shall how shall they hear except they be a preacher he said how shall they be the preacher go except he is sent equipped this thing grieves my spirit because i know what it is doing for people it's not many of us and 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 sadly we men of god must take responsibility the scope of our preaching is just to make sure you have enough let me tell you this look at me as you see me right now there is food in my house 
as you see me right now i have a car as you see me right now i have some money in my account so i would be a wicked man to act as if this is exactly what preachers do just because we have something small we come and stand and run our mouths on stage and talk nonsense i'm not thinking about what to wear if i want to wear a cloth i can call a tailor if i want to preach and pray overnight i have a generator that can run overnight but do you have it do i care a good shepherd lays down his life this is what we are talking about just because you are a preacher you have a little car you have a little house and all you tell people is just build your spirit their children are not going to school just build your spirit they are becoming armed robbers they are becoming touts it's a strategy we have a lot of children in this ministry and we have the privilege by the grace of god it is an honor for me to be able to put a smile in the face of these children there are people today who are graduates because money was used as a weapon there are people today who are doing well because money was used as a weapon there are people who have escaped death because money was used as a weapon there are people who have had the courage to turn away from a life of a nonsense rebellious life because finance was a weapon have you ever been taught that money is not about luxury it's a weapon it's a weapon of war and in the days to come it will be one of the most effective weapons are we together many children who should not die died because that weapon was not there to fight the war for them many individuals very simple cases some of you as you are seated here you've not paid your school fees that's your whole prayer while we are praying now you're just crying and satan sits back because the rich will rule over the poor and the borrower will be slave to the lender this is not about there are no matter how greedy you are you can't enter 10 cars at the same time no matter how we are not talking about i know that there have been exaggerations people whose life is just filled with lust and all they want is to wear the gold and silver but i'm bringing to you a call this is a call as serious as your fasting a call as serious as your spiritual life wake up to wake up is not to hustle to wake up is not to do business to wake up is not even to get a job to wake up is to come to the realization that there is a war and the destiny of my children is at stake like the woman the wife of a prophet yet they were carrying the same prophet that should carry prosperity the children were about going to slavery must satan carry all our young ladies and marry them to devils and we and witch and wizards all around simply because of financial resources you see how many christian ladies right now will get up and two weeks you don't see them again and you found out that they've married one son of the born woman somewhere and the families will endorse them because the devil will make sure that lady now is supposed to be a prophetess but finances deviated her assignment is god saying anything to you tonight this is a war don't see money as some luxury and when we say money you are just thinking gucci louis vuitton look i'm teaching you things from the kingdom thank god for all the blessings but there is only so much you can do for that we are talking of lives that will be changed i plan to use resources as a dangerous weapon the devil will hate me in this lifetime because of what will be done with resources look the good schools in this nation our children cannot go there the schools that are taught values i had the opportunity to visit um lean academy beautiful school i got to talk with the man he's an unbeliever but very wise and intelligent man the the head teacher of the school was was a student in school of ministry he may be here and i got to talk and when i found out the school fees i said this is a beautiful school but how many children can go there look what has happened to our government schools now a teacher sags his trouser and goes around f9 parallel yet he's the one teaching accounting yet he's the one teaching mathematics he's as confused as the student they help themselves to solve the classwork that's where your child is this is not just an issue of wealth it's an issue of warfare satan is doing something to the minds of a generation 
that's why you see all these young boys now they are not serious you see a boy of 16 years all his, his business is girls and computer game as small as he is prayer zero everything that is of god zero so the devil now suggests something else codeine uh, what they call that thing uh, tramadol and all those demonic things and then there is a clique of people just like him and he becomes part of it it's a war it's a serious war my child will not get up and serve the devil i will use everything he says see also that you are bound in this grace by god's grace we are going to we will soon set up a school and we'll set it up and have the resources to bring the price down enough to allow meritocracy that children that are competent will attend it not just children of big people i made a covenant with god that i will never raise people who are just anointed no i believe in influence i'm not a fool don't you let anybody mislead you there are levels of your life you can never rise a church can buy a land but no influence and a government can just come up with a policy and collect it halfway into the building and there's nobody to speak for them you must have the resources that give you the ability to speak at the gates he said let her walk speak for her there are times you are not allowed to speak it's your resources that is can speak are we together the other time god tv god tv one of the largest christian channels we have on earth the few christian channels that are preserving the purity of godliness they were asking for six million dollars what is six million dollars for god's sake that for 21 days non-stop they are crying you listen and there is nothing that is the gospel for those three weeks you listen no salvation prayer no nothing is just begging begging i love them and i respect them what is there for somebody to just get up what is six million a lady somewhere will smile at a billionaire and say i saw a house somewhere i want it and he says how much say 10 million dollars say all for you and satan mocks the church look how we fast for money is that a reason to fast why should you fast for money there are people going to hell why in the world should you fast for money do you know talking about prosperity forever is a cause why should our churches be filled with the issue of prosperity all the time money 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 because that's what is needed there are more important things i will multiply them they will not be few i will glorify them they will not be small let me tell you there is a campaign we are leading in this nation it's a campaign of balance balance that you can be anointed and prosperous and god-fearing and serious and a responsible father a husband and a leader that's the lamb's wife complete complete can i confess to you satan is not after you as young as we are satan is after our children i have seen this thing satan is beginning to give up on our generation because we are following the patterns of our fathers you know our parents loved god to the extent that money or no money that god to death now with the young people with the intelligence we are finding do you know the biggest trouble on earth now is between young people from 16 years downwards not the other ones some who are 20 their parents have died and it has forced responsibility on them but these are our young children 16 you sit down and talk with them and they will surprise you to hear the kind of things they are learning and where they are learning it from someone has got to arise no education no nothing you see somebody that tells you he's a graduate tell him to write a letter a letter he writes a letter as if he's chatting he can't construct an intelligent thing and that's why all the positions of influence will be occupied by unbelievers then very few believers they squeeze us somewhere where it's impossible to grow ask a young man to construct to you a sentence right now you will be surprised nonsense and that person is a master's holder it's not his fault he was mentored by people who were limited Through prosperity shall my city, my agenda. It's not just about houses. Don't join people who don't know the purpose of money. Don't join money mongers 
who everything about their life is money 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 oh i drank water in a gold cup i ate fish with a silver spoon wonderful may god bless you enjoy it but more importantly because of me one thousand souls were saved in one month that's money with a mission because of me i decided to sponsor the children of the missionaries and i said you can go and preach the 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 one that pains me most eh, jimmy is these missionaries i i think maybe one day we'll play a documentary here for many of you to see the sufferings of those who have signed out for the kingdom you look at their children you look at a poor woman who came to hold the hands of a man to say i will walk with you through life educated but simply because of the gospel they have been reduced to ashes and we are here buying cars and buying all of this and claiming that because of that god is faithful it's not just a man's a man's worth does not constitute in the abundance of things don't get me wrong i'm not saying to sit down and celebrate mediocrity you should be a partaker of the wisdom of god in your life however more importantly wealth with a mission imagine that you can buy five buses and give certain ministries around capro um what they call them navigators and all these people and say this is the hand of god upon your life what is my business with your 20 estates what's my business with your 100 estates you will die and your irresponsible children will sell it that was the pain of solomon but that someone can stand today do you know billy graham preached in north korea the only preacher koinonia please let's wake up this thing is an agenda of darkness to enslave me to enslave you to enslave our children that a time will come the last time you will see your child was when he was three years old you will see him again slavery took him to go and walk look at all these young girls that are in italy these young girls that are in libya don't you think they have parents are the parents not alive someone just comes to tell them i want to give you a job in libya and takes those young girls and go and ruin and wreck and destroy and shred their lives they come back years later their contemporaries have gone far ahead of them and they are back no education no god no wisdom if anybody marketed poverty for you i'm canceling it tonight at the same time if anybody has opened your eyes to see that all about money is just car and jeep i still cancel it tonight Amen. that people men and women whose heart is not in their treasure who have set their minds on things above that no matter what god gives you he can place a demand at it at any time god can say look pastor alpha these five children are your project and you say yes sir not just because you are obedient the means is there noiseless impact not making noise all around and talking rubbish imagine how many ladies here can have foundations and bring all these young girls whose lives have been destroyed and change them and build them you can't do that if you have to depend on your daily bread somewhere we are going to pray lord make me your treasurer rise up the first treasure that you had disappointed you lord i can be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom i can be trusted with the resources of heaven lift your voice please let's pray let's pray let's pray lift your voice let's pray Let's pray. Lord, trust us with your resources. Lord, enough of selling our souls to the devil. Enough of selling our dignity to the systems of the world. Pray, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. The Bible says, For God gives a man that is good in his sight. What? Wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he giveth travail to gather and to heap that he may bring to him that is good before God. Lord, the wisdom that will attract resources from the world to be used for kingdom business. I receive it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, the wisdom, the knowledge, the information, the strategy, the strategy, the Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Quickly, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. Four verses. We are reading 13 to 17. Please, everyone, look at your screen if you can see it. I want to read it. This wisdom have I seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Are you ready now? Follow the story. Next verse. There was a little city and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it we are talking of warfare here warfare now there was a there was found in that city a what poor wise man the bible says and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man no man remembered the same poor man 16 then said i wisdom is better than strength read the remaining one to go nevertheless a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard you will never rise to a position of influence if all you have is just ideas wisdom it takes economic empowerment to make these proud kings of the earth listen to you is more than information is more than education you need the resources that will force them to listen open your mouth and say lord in addition to my wisdom give me wealth give me wealth let me not be a poor wise man Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. It says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. We are going to talk about the rest. There is something prosperity can do to you. It can make you forget God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He is giving this man an advice. When you have built houses and when you are now comfortable, let me tell you this. There are many people who have never been prosperous enough to forget thinking about money. 
but there is a realm in your life you don't have to be a millionaire to get to that realm there is a realm where your basic needs are met beyond measure there is no reason why you should have concerns for food to eat you will be surprised to see that you will not pray for one month that the only time you open your bible is when you come to church you did plan to backslide comfort outside of god can make men happen like that he said thou shalt remember the lord thy god that's the message every other thing was just an addition to that message the central message in this verse was don't forget god he said but for your information to remind you it is he that giveth thee what power power, power. like a herbalist gives you a charm he says use it that god can give men the power capacity ability god can give a church the power to get well god can give a man the power to get well god can give a family the power to get well he said you have not because you ask not you do not have the power because you ask not you do not have the power that programs favor upon you because you ask not you do not have the keys and the ideas because you have not you are there looking around for it but you are refusing to ask it's not found on earth only god can give it Lift your voice and say, Lord, the power to get upon my family, upon my destiny. Now listen, when it comes to the issue of prosperity, there are systems. Whatever you receive in the spirit, there are systems of knowledge. You make money because of understanding, not business, not job. It is your understanding that controls things. There's no time to deal with that today. But we're going to deal with two aspects, just two areas. Number one is the favored dimension of kingdom wealth. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, 21. The favored dimension of kingdom wealth and I will give these people favor in the sight of wicked men God can use anybody to favor you Egyptians are not the people to ask favor from I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians what will be the proof of the favor it says and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go emptiness is proof that there is no favor it says when there is a relationship between favor and abundance it says i will give these people favor i will give these people favor i will give joshua selman favor i will give koinonia favor before anybody doesn't matter who before governments before kings before nobles before gentiles i will give you favor Let's see the fulfillment of it. Chapter 12, verse 36. God said, I will give these people favor. When God speaks, can we trust him? Yes, Chapter 12, verse 36. Quickly, please. Chapter 12. Read with me. One to read. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent to them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. That's favor. That's favor. That somebody who has no business blessing your family will get up and say, I have five houses. I was sleeping and I saw in a dream and I brought the key and the immediately overnight. Let me tell you this. I want you to believe this. Brothers and sisters, get rich quick schemes may be wrong, but God can give men speed of prosperity don't ever allow anybody indoctrinate you it is the training process that takes time 
the manifestation will happen overnight like the twinkling of an eye it is true it takes time to be trained but when the favor lands on you you can sleep in prison one night and by the next morning brothers and sisters there is no reason to ever see the trace of poverty around your life again it says and they spoiled the egyptians if all you will get in this life is what the labor market gives you prepare to be greedy prepare to be angry prepare to have stress there's nothing wrong with your productivity remember an anointing was put on the fish fish does not produce coin but when a grace came on that fish coin came out it's one thing to be skilled it's another thing for an anointing to be upon your skill when a cara builds a house that's no longer profession that's favor are you hearing what i'm saying when chair rental can buy bus for a mission agency then this is not rentals again there is a hand that is influencing it when your song all of a sudden gets to the nations you had the skill but the wings is no longer skill that one is grace i believe in be skillful but is your skill anointed there are many gifted people on earth that will never see the finger of god hallelujah i was traveling to lagos from a few weeks ago and i flew with professor wale soinka in fact he was sitting down at my seat and while i was just admiring the man truly i was and i was looking at him and the air hostess was trying to get him up so that i'll sit and i rebuked her i said don't do this this is a prestigious man this is a man who from the confines of his village has gone around the whole world nobody does unusual things naturally whether the person admits or not the truth is that it cannot happen there is a level of growth and influence and impact now and i looked at him said my god look at this there are people who go to the devil they are skilled though they are businessmen they finish the business meeting while people are sleeping they are there naked in a shrine they have you see the man and they tell you this guy came from harvard he's wise enough he knows with his wisdom he also needs prosperity so the harbor says sit down and he sits naked that's the ceo of a company of an airline and all of a sudden they concoct rubbish on his head and once they finish they kill a baby there and drain the baby's blood they all drink it the man gets up and customers start coming his wisdom created the company something else is what is calling the customers believers do not understand the favor dimension I, I have cried this thing in this ministry and tonight i know our time is gone but please in the next two three minutes everyone that asked receiveth cry and say lord put your faith upon my life Arise in your favor. Arise in your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Favor is not just money, favor is men. There are things money cannot do. Let me tell you how you know you are favored. By the speed with which men arise to help you. You can be rich and die alone. Build a house alone, no helper. Send the children alone, no helper. Favor is not when you have money. Favor is when you have men. In the multitude of men is a king's honor. When you have men, you have their resources. Listen, let me tell you. There are some of us we have some money but we don't have favor don't be deceived that just because there are resources 
you have tea and bread you can build a little house that does not mean you have favor favor is when men come david was in the cave of adulam men left everywhere and came they covenanted with themselves that's favor there is the favor dimension you know when favor is working when men begin to appear you hear people testifying an uncle called me i told you no man comes to you by himself they are called we are getting to them that will be the last prayer point father every area in my life that have not experienced favor Send men, send men, send men, send men with your wisdom, send men with your resources. Send men to Koinonia, send men to every family here, send men, oh God, to every ministry, to every business, send lifters, send promoters, send announcers. Send multipliers, men of influence, men of access. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Hosea chapter 12. There are three dimensions to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Please listen. The first dimension is called transactional wealth. Wealth that is as a result of selling value. Business. Your job. You exchange your skill. You exchange your productivity for a financial reward. That's the first level of wealth. It's called transactional wealth. You don't receive rewards until you sell something. Your idea, your skill. That's the first level of wealth. The second level of wealth is called transformational wealth. It is the reward you get for changing lives. It's the reward you get for transforming people. Are we together? If you bless someone, you raise someone, you lift someone, that person now blesses you. You are not selling anything. You are giving. The person is coming back with gratitude because his life has been transformed. This is the second level of wealth. The third dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. Exclusively a product of prophecy. These three dimensions of wealth must work in your life. There are many of us only the transactional level. You have a job. You are doing a little business. Wonderful. But you are limited. Listen. Please give me this. If this is 100 naira, transactional wealth says it's 100 naira forever. I can't buy this 1,000. It will be a scam. You will be cheating me. I can, I can sue you to court. Are we together? So this is, I'm selling a product. That money remains provided my idea works. If I am sick or something happens to my system, this is gone. It's over forever. The second is that I can find out when you are thirsty and give you this and you will remember that one day i bless you and now buy me a carton of it your rewarding me is based on your perception of my usefulness in your life but there is the third dimension wealth by the finger of god verse, verse 13 please hosea 12 and verse 13 and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt not by their desire by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. He said, and by a prophet, they were preserved. There is a dimension of the prophetic in wealth. There, that's why herbalists will never go out of business. 
most hedonistic businessmen know they will pay their staff 200,000 and pay a herbalist 10 million is the perception of the value are we together second chronicles 2020 and then we'll pray the last prayer point tonight second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood listen and said hear me O Koinonia and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem he said believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established but believe his prophets so shall you prosper so when the woman was in challenge there was no time to start learning any business skill the, her children was listen there are things that you need god to come speedily when will you learn business skill to play the rent you can learn later on but the rent needs to be paid in 24 hours that one you don't need transactional wealth you don't need transformation you need sovereign wealth the finger of god that by this time tomorrow the economy of your land the reason why many african nations are poor they have abused the voices that god has put they are intelligent people with economic formulas but when god speaks most of them just look and say oh don't worry but the prophet said by this time tomorrow and a foolish man say even if god opens the windows of heaven shall these things be he said you will see it but you will never partake of it every time people were hungry in the bible god sent prophets jehoshaphat here the widow of zarephath and several other people they were looking for fish in john 21 they couldn't catch any fish suddenly the very prophet himself the prophet of prophets jesus little children have you any catch he said no he said cast your net to the right side immediately they caught fish they had to call on their partners to help them i like you to pray because i'm going to speak certain things from the depth of my heart pray and say lord change my life i tap into the dimension of sovereign wealth wealth by the finger of god wealth by the finger of god hallelujah in 2007 i had a vision a real vision not a dream in that vision i entered many things happened but i entered a room a door was open as soon as i entered that room i saw dollars i saw pounds i saw naira and I had gone for a meeting where Bishop Oyedeko was there and I knelt down before him. I was sowing a seed and he told me there is more. He said I should bring out. When I sowed it, he laid his hands on me and I entered that room. I looked. I was holding something like a bag. How can a room just be full of money alone? And surprisingly, I was not even connected to it. Not like you want to carry quickly. And then a voice spoke and said I should pick and then i picked a few of the different currencies and i put there i was about to step out and i had the audible voice of god four words massive kingdom wealth transfer i had that voice i remember when i announced that thing people insulted me people said all kinds of things and i said this is not my fault it's something that i saw oh jerusalem jerusalem you who kill your prophets that there are people who God will make a declaration and they will just sit down and not care and say it doesn't matter all these ones are nonsense please brothers and sisters hear me there is a prophetic dimension of wealth you hear people receiving alerts here that they don't know the person who sent it you can just see one name you can just see two names it's not a lie it's not a scam one of our dear ones here 
after one of such sessions like that he just went to kaduna and found out that dunamis were sending all their land and they just brought him and kept him at the helm of affairs and god just multiplied and lifted that guy like that people's lives are changing except your own there are people who are not as smart as you but they can be foolish enough to say lord i believe you i remember when I, the lord instructed me to go to canaan land and sow a seed into god's servant bishop oyedeko and i went there did it i won't tell you what but it was a sacrifice and when i went i came out happily though costly i was on my way to leave and the lord told me to kneel down there at canaan land he said put your hand on the ground i put my hand there and he said from today you have entered overflow acts chapter 20 and verse 32 presence of God is mighty in this place. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you first to God, second to the word. I commend you first to God, then second to the word. I commend you I transfer responsibility for the results in your life first to God. Like you transfer a small child and say, from now, take care of him. And God is saying, Paul is speaking and say, I commend you first to God, to, to the word. It says that that word is able, hmm. is able does not outsource power from any other place in itself it is able to build you up number one number two it says it is able to give the word can give things to men it is able to build you up then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it says i commend you first to god then i commend you to the word it says that that word is able to build you. To build you means to translate you. To take you to a dimension higher than your prior experience. And then as a reward for staying, it says it will give you an inheritance. Something provable. Something demonstrable. That everyone will know that this one would only have come if a man met God and met his word lift your voice in one minute and say lord i have come i have come to encounter god and encounter the world i trust in the ability of the world to build me it is able to build you up Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Please be seated. One of the things that I pray will continue to happen to us is that God by His Spirit will continue to grant us the comprehension of the value of the word of god in the life of a believer it's not enough to just believe that the word of god is god's word you must believe that the word of god contains within itself an ability and that the word of god is able to make men if received it says he came to his own and his own received him not then he says, but as many as received him, anything received can be rejected. Is that true? As many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, the Bible says he gave them power to become. Power to become. Nobody is made by default. My brothers and my sisters, listen. Saul does not become Paul just by default. There is a system in the kingdom that makes men. There's nothing wrong with the way you come. 
except that if you are willing to engage in the systems of the kingdom then there is a guarantee that the word of god god who is the owner of the word and the word of god commended to you you know many times we talk about the word of god the power of the word but the truth is that we have not educated people enough to see the value in the word of god are we together now yes the bible says in john chapter 1 the gospel of john chapter 1 the bible says in the beginning listen was the word and it says the word was with god then it says the word was god it says that he was with god in the beginning now here's the part it says through him all things how many things now when the bible tells you something made everything you should respect it are we together now yes that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because god is not a magician it's a system that means your participation is required but that line upon line my brothers and my sisters let me give you a guarantee and i tell you this in the name of the lord if you listen to the things that i teach you and you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny it's a matter of time forget about the things you do not see and focus on what god is giving you what god is giving you is greater than any car you can buy trust me you must have something greater than material things to get material things you can't have something less than material things and then have these things god is if all god gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you he will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you, you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately please pay attention especially for those outside unfortunately men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late the system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out so if all you are looking for is just result you may be you may miss a major part of the dealings of god god is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting and then the devil will use manipulate because you see let me tell you this the domain of the senses is where satan dwells he is the master of the sense realm 
he knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses the sensory perceptions that come from his environment so he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what god is doing in your life if it is true you are receiving favor where is it and you stand and say boy it's true oh, Kai, god you serve I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And he said, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them if if you give yourself halfway hoping so that if it fails at least you can put your leg somewhere it, it doesn't work like that let me tell you you throw yourself in this thing and say if i perish i perish this this scientific christianity i know god is faithful but let me patch him with an uncle so one leg is here one leg so that whatever happens your ego is not strong and that very ego is why you may never see the power of god because you have not proven to god that you have thrown all to him and you just come and say god if you don't help me i don't have an option god says this is what i like now that you have stepped aside let me show you that i'm a great god are we blessed tonight i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of god don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before god empty-handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of god 
is one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down i'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because i'm not aware it will not touch me i will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of god in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a god that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of god are encapsulated in this bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that god does something in your life that you can now say kai god now i know i know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which god you say no forget about apostle look at my life i'm now a testimony an epistle that god is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking you are learning no the bible says that the sower sows the word right there satan is in the midst of of, of god's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but lord i'm determined I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life if you see God's hand in one two three areas and remaining four five six you are encouraged but where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony are we together it is the Word of God that builds it is the Word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of god allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of god gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and god says there is a seat i've given you in the prophetic and the word of god gives you that position you stay there and you know it's an office backed up by god himself no man will be able to stand against you this one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry listen as a testimony of your staying power with god for as a prince you have power with god you can roam around and say god has called me into business life drives you out you come again and say 
um, God called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space and he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life. Dominion is territorial. Until you find your jurisdiction of dominion, you cannot begin to walk in it. You will hate people. You will be angry. You will quarrel people. You will hate others that God is blessing in their area of dominion. It is the word of God that allocates. While the word of God is being taught, mystery after mystery, principle after principle, the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance. And so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you to get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that 
they can they can share the um, what they call it get the debt benefit and share the money listen to what i'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when God gives you a spiritual inheritance, no man, no tribe, they may hate you, but my brothers and my sisters, when a key is given to you, the key is given in a way and a manner that God will cause nations to pass through that door. It's impossible to ignore you. These are the truths I have found. There is rest when you find this. all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now they are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you are saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that he has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you. Bless you guys. Thank you. We must have passion for the word of God. I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year. In fact, when the Lord put this in my heart, I said, Oh Lord, but I've cried to you again and again to allow me to preach this. And... Um, I honestly thought we'd be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom. Please listen to me. There are things when you find in this kingdom. God, hell, and men will know you found something. There are things when you find only God will know you found it. There are things when you find only men will know. But there are things when you find God, men, hell, will know but by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next 
we'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year, brother. And, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about, because of the way, I don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way. You know, once people just hear riches, a lot of people are very happy. This is a very spiritual teaching. In fact, riches is really spiritual. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Read with me, believers. One, two, read. Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from... Let's read one more time. One, two, read. Uh Uh-huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust? True riches. There's something in this kingdom called true riches and the bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access He's not just trying to tell you the, He's saying who else Who else can commit to you This mystery that we call true riches Thank you Ephesians chapter 3 We'll read from verse 2 to 8 Listen very carefully And you'll understand something powerful tonight Paul is speaking now If ye have heard Of the dispensation Of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3. How that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote a in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. (laughs) Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace so is a grace is this grace given what is the grace that i should preach among the gentiles help me the unsearchable riches not just the gospel 
that I should preach the unsearchable, unfathomable riches. Look at the description that is used there. He didn't say that I should preach the gospel, that I should preach. They, they are mysteries. The Bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the Bible calls the unsearchable riches of Christ. These are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that. And he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business? Naira and Kobo? No, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That men, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere when Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you, I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing. And he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of Christ. I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the lord opened me up to this i was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and god is my witness and i tell you this i'm a i'm a student i'm not ashamed when i learn things from people and i build 
you know i'm not i'm not somebody who is is is, is arrogant to say all oh, this and that i am a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way i look at you is the same way god was opening me up to the world see this this is the key the mystery that connects to this and many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we're teaching, we're teaching, this is, this is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. These spiritual blessings, these unsearchable riches, what you call true riches, they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now. The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage. There has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge, where we sustain an advantage. It is not, it is not something hidden that life is harsh. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. It is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration. Men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm. Mm -mm. From tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations, etc., etc. Everything looks like it's against you. You only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage. Are we together now? yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors, you see that? I will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability. I have trusted systems that have provided an advantage. And the Bible tells us that these unsearchable riches, they were designed by God as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign. So he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification. It is ultimately God that gives us victory, my brothers and my sisters, but the victory is broken into systems. So you can know that God has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided. And you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage. Are we together now? Bless you. Thank you. So true riches I define as spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of God's life here and now we're just doing an introduction 
Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace. Everybody say the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. It says they shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. This is what validates the fact that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them. So they are speaking over the saints. So the word us there is a mistake in translation. Redeem them to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred. Listen now. Every tongue, every people, every nation. Verse 10. And has made us. Now them you understand. And has made us unto our God. What? Kings. And priests. And the Bible says. And we shall reign. Where? On earth. So God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now I hope you understand, let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities, that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many. He is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all that routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe, you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were? To receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We are refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one. Right? So, a separate entity called a man. Another separate entity called a woman. By covenant, they become one. One, not physically, but one in the spirit. Recognized by God himself. Are we together now? That's why the Bible says, let no man do asunder, it put asunder. It's a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened. Still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God. And then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience. And then your mind is educated again. The light 
is driving out that darkness and gradually gradually by all those exercises conformity and transformation not impartation yet conformity and transformation these things will remain for a very long time in your life and then you begin to see the grace speaking are we together now because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil there are things that are correct so god will not reset your mind and then he will do that only with your permission so it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years that's how slow you wanted god to take you are we together now so you find out that after 10 years the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with God is not showing in your life. God is limited by your yieldedness, limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predetermined counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. Are we together now? A work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness. That's why they can't take credit for it. It was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide. So they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is. The only thing they have to do is correct their errors, not pray for new visions. They have been seeing it since. It's just that they have been interpreting nonsense. So what they are repenting of is not, it's not, it's not a hazy vision. There are people who even, they got born again and there and then, they started seeing visions. There and then. Others came from priesthood. A wrong key forced the door. To, you, you understand what I mean? A wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll, we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when I look at in my life sometimes I just get down on my knees and I say God thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful I found them and they are very powerful can I give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God. The goodness of God. What is this? You will know now that it is that grace that is released on you. If this grace is not present, you cannot have conscience. It is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men. Not mercy. Mercy has its place. The goodness. Everything I'm telling you, I will show you from the Bible. You will now see why God told Moses, it is my goodness. I will allow you to see my goodness. The goodness of God allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance. 
but the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance the word repent is not for sinners I've told you this it's not a word that is just left for sinners it's a kingdom expression a system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory it's called repentance let's look at a very serious scripture Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're Bible students Romans 2 1 to 4 ready I will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this O man that judges them which do such things and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God now look at verse 4 read with me please or despised thou the what riches hold on stop let's not rush despised thou the remember we're talking of true riches we're fishing them out now that there is something called the riches of his goodness what does it do and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leaded thee to repentance if you ever repent it is the goodness of god that came to you it's not something you did by your strength to say oh i think I... no the the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that god has been good to you this is the bible it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of god's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of god or the goodness of god is one of the true riches of the kingdom many people just ah oh god when the bible says surely goodness we quote it every time surely goodness and mercy as if we are singing a special number this is a very deep mystery if the goodness of god does not go with you i will tell you i will show you people from the bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches you will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of god's goodness read with me one to read speaking lies in hypocrisy uh-huh having their conscience seared with a hot iron do you know what this means that means you have lost the ability to recognize this is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman bring out a child and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of christ so god looks at men and sends his goodness to them and all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level and they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it keep that scripture again please romans 2 and verse 4 the riches of his goodness not just his goodness the riches the wealth You see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Lucy, no no demon has this lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of god 
So repentance is in it. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. Has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds? Why didn't he say, God, I've watched this thing for a long time. Let's talk. You are my creator. No. It is the goodness of God that allows men to ever see the need for repentance. Hmm. Evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades. Don't just pray for signs. Oh God, let them know I was called. Mm -mm. Pray intelligently. Lord, let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness. And you will watch the wonder. This is what happens in redemption camp. When Papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says, I will count one to five. One. And you see people run. They don't even know what is bringing them out. This is what the generals had. Charles G. Finney. Are we together now? They had this in, in very abundant measures. They understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of God. When we say the goodness of God, we just mean his ability to be benevolent. It's more than that. The primary assignment of the goodness of God is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory. The Bible calls it his goodness. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Is somebody learning something tonight? It says, who shall commit to you? If God opens your eyes and you see it and engage it, then your life will change. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is God's willingness. So he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going, their lives can never reflect God and then his goodness. Some of you, it was the goodness of God that brought you here to Koinonia, not invitation. It was the goodness of God that gave you access to the teachings because God designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared... God made somebody to give me miracle a lot. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of God. I, I got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting God to help them to start a life and the, the young boy and his friend, true story, they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it to help them start life and the young boy, it was his turn. He was driving a car of his friend's father. And there came a big truck. It was a miracle that the boy survived. And the family said, I'm not hearing anything. Just get my car and bring for me. 
that was how they had to look for uh, these are people like council they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, walking that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting. See it now again. Get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is causing men to discern 
acknowledge and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 doth not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart hear for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right thing seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver hold on if i give you wisdom and i give you silver wisdom says please don't be foolish to choose silver leave silver fast and come to me and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies two things the bible says are better than rubies one wisdom to a virtuous woman and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what i want you to do. now wisdom is giving you a manifesto like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out and he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him and he's saying by me kings reign if you see any king reigning on earth this is what enthroned him wisdom you see any king reigning in business, in ministry, is not just God. Wisdom. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. 
I love them that love me. And those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Three more verses or two. Then I was by him. Ah. As one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of men. Last verse. Now therefore unto me, O ye children... Hearken to me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Wisdom. One of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results. That means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Not the knowledge of it. Not the comprehension of it. The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to use the word to produce supernatural results. That's wisdom. My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today. Supernatural wisdom that happened to men. They rose on account of that wisdom. Let's look at one scripture. First Kings chapter 3, Solomon. God's portrait of wisdom. You see that every once and again, these men obtain one or more of these attributes. And that's what they used to do business in the earth realm. And they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We're reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself, what? 
long life neither hast thou asked here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one two read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite than heman than Kalkol, than dada all these guys are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it. There were songs that were written last month. We are tired of it. It tells you the dimension. It's not that there, there's something wrong with the song. The dimension from which the song came, if it is that which is of the earth is earthy. That which is of heaven is heavenly. 33. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that god gives you even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it are we together now but where shall wisdom be found remember i asked us a question he said get wisdom and i said where so job now the man of wisdom 
wisest, richest. Job is having a conversation. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Have you seen that they always go together? Next verse. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Ah, where is the land of the living? That means it's not found here. It's not a commodity that is affordable in any market. Let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth. Mm -mm. It cannot be found. The earth does not have the capacity to produce this. It can produce Sophia, human wisdom, that is a derivative of trial and error and science, but not the wisdom that comes from above. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not with me. That means all these things, go back, all these things are storage devices on earth. They hide things. The depth, there are things that the depth keeps. And those who know it can say, bring it out. That's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say, oh earth. He said, let the people praise thee. This earth is not barren. Let the people praise thee. This earth will start yielding. Meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth. No wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth. The earth hides fruitfulness. Water hides abundance. You read your Bible, everything, the birds of the air and everything came out of water. And so they said, the depth said it is not with me. The sea said it is not with me. Next verse. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Uh-huh. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, nor with the precious onyx, nor the sapphire. Next verse. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's the secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why I told you it is it is a grace. This is not something you walk. Education cannot give it. No. When men possess this dimension of wisdom, God gave it to men. It's one of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Solomon possessed it. And he did wonders. Ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery. And you can see a very young, frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you. That the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord. Believe me, Satan has deceived us to chase after things. God never designed that we chase after things. These are the commanders of dominion. 
when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of god so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of god that will not focus listen many young nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of god just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of Christ your anger is just beginning you will be angry till you die it will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say yet the spirit saith the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high eyesight so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed 
at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the spirit is going wherever the voice of God is that's where his power is so if God's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will know i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean you will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what he will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if god helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation 
with fear and trembling. One of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. I'm not one person who comes all the time and says, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said. Just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak, everyone around me knows God has said, the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. Here and there you can think you had God And he said go to Kano You can say I know I had Kano But tomorrow you just turn But you know God is very faithful He will allow you He knows we are students in the school of the spirit Just keep playing around But the day his majestic voice lands on your life There is no power that can stop you Let me tell you God is not always speaking God speaks But he's not always speaking A lot of people keep saying God is always speaking No sir are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people. This is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you no, know, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit down and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and to you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me. 
and just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3, put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says, sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life. There are things God has said. Listen to me. There are things God has said. When God talks, notice that God doesn't care what you are seeing. He tells you what you will do and he will do it. So I stand upon my watch. I'm not in a hurry to move. God, what are you saying in this season? That's the reason why we have workers' retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because many of you have gone, no disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God. Because there is, as it were, many voices, many sounds. And none of them is without significance. The voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you. Your child's school fees, your life. And God is saying, fast for three days. I say, is it God? Is it a demon? Is it? Yes, there are times that you check against the word of God. But let me tell you, there are times only God will help you. Because even you, you don't know whether this is God again. Most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm. That's why they don't understand. Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport, oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car. I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we passed Jaji, I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare. And then they now said, everybody bring your money. And people were bringing them. But my, God is my witness. My heart was at peace. This is what happens when it's God that is speaking. You leave him to be responsible for the word. I just obeyed. And that was how someone brought out, paid my transport fare. I dropped at flyover here, entered the bus, happy because I felt at least whatever it is, this one I'll pay. And someone knew me in the car and paid. I stopped in front of Northgate with the same money I was with there. It was a message. God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he sees him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will need this for ministry. 
when God sent us to go for our crusade, we got up and moved like madmen. What you see today, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of the voice of God. You need the grace to hear God, not grace for prophecy. Lord, let me hear you. You, you, you. Look, you can pray and say, God, search my frail person. What is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me? Help me in that area. There are some of you that your hearing, you have not trained your hearing. If, you, if God speaks through your ears, you will not hear. And so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. Let me tell you, if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one is not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable riches. The hearing ear, the seeing eye. One time, the storm was boisterous. I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. An angel appears to him and speaks to him and says, Don't worry, there shall be no loss. And he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me. And he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called Melita. When you hear God, you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing. And people are saying, excuse me sir, this is fire. You say, no, I'm sitting on the voice of God. Mm. Roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of God for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against God just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone God will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and you say god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and you say people we're ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom 
the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked i said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything but my goodness there are things this ear can hear we are going to pray and when it's time to pray you are going to cry if it means you laying hands on your ears to say Lord I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you it's very clear that my life is the way it is now because I'm not hearing you are we together you need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices come down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time 
it was Bishop Oyediko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in Ghana. Living Faith was blossoming, doing very well. And they started the church in Ghana and there was so much struggle. After like four, was it five years or six years or so, the increase was not there. And he was struggling everything. He said he went there by himself to preach. And still nothing worked. And he went back and said, God, what is the problem? And God said, I am not there. And he said, shut it down immediately. There are some of you from this message tonight. You need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life. Because if you check it, you will find out. There's nothing wrong if you thought it was God. You are a student in the school of the spirit. Oh, I thought this business was God. But now I'm hearing this is not God. Oh. I thought that it was God that said I should start the ministry. I remember years ago when my well friends and all of that, you know, not really close friends who meet me and say, Apostle, with the kind of grace you have, start a TV ministry. Start this. I told you about PFN. When we had our first crusade, PFN was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say, start, start a church. We need you. Be careful. Not every good thing is God. Things don't have to be bad for you to leave them. Sometimes they can be good. They are just not God. There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of God works. He said he will speak peace. Peace is a voice. Peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water. Peace can tell you, man of God, this association you are joining is what will destroy you. It doesn't mean they are fake. It doesn't mean they are not of God. But this association is what will bring down your grace. Man of God, be careful. That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a mecca dying. But in the physical, it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you it will remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Uh, make him ma, make him ma, make him make him ma. If you have been unfaithful, not faithful with unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom? These are the mysteries we do ministry with. These are the mysteries by which kings rise. And you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits. And you are saying, my God, how is this thing working? My brothers and my sisters, these are the systems. Paul said, me who I am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that I become a communicator of the unsearchable riches. I have learned these things and they have helped me. They have delivered me from evil. That prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. One hearing from God can deliver you and deliver your children's children. Our parents went head on. Some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of God in Nigeria today. And had they continued hearing God well, 
they would have given us a good footing but the inability to hear i have seen pastors men of god that i knew years ago men of fire and seeing them and their shadows of themselves how can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow because of one of these spiritual blessings no wisdom some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship are you ready to pray tonight these are the keys by which we read my brothers and my sisters look at me forget about cars truly believe me forget about houses forget about all this fake life up and down when you possess these things you will tame life it will be at your command you will watch yourself with shock and wonder there are about eight of these true riches we'll preach it in a series next i just felt in my spirit to introduce it tonight the spiritual blessings that constitute an advantage in a believer i like you in the next our time is gone but in the next five minutes find a corner find somewhere and cry to god i'll just allow you instrumentally just set the atmosphere for us everyone pray everyone pray just one of all of this that i listed the grace to hear you listen i like you to cry with all your heart lord grant me the grace i'm tired of thinking it is you when it is not you
time is gone but please listen we have just one more service for the year lord activates the speakings of angels the angel came and told daniel he said i am come to give you understanding there are angels that are sent i like you by faith to activate their ministry the angels the ministry spirits bringing accuracy bringing direction cleanses your ears and helps you listen listen the voice of god will take away wastage from your life wastage there are many men of god whose ministries finances have gone down because they didn't hear god they organized conferences god was not in it yes souls were saved yes lives were transformed there are many people who should not even have churches but they thought they had this is not to scare you but i'm being sincere with you happy is the man whose ears can hear the voice of god because you see we live in an arrogant society where people and their pride will mislead you away from god this our world is very proud you see people who don't know where they are going but they make you feel stupid for staying where god said you should stay and if you are not careful they will rob you of the courage to stand until you fall with them if i followed what people said if i followed what people wanted to do in my life if i followed what people wanted me to do i would have crashed in life and crashed in ministry some of us after koinonia listen i this we have one more service maximize it are we together some of us after this service you, you should go and find somewhere even if it's for one hour in the night to say lord this issue of hearing you you have to tidy this in my life everything you claim god told you by now we know he's not the one that said it don't feel ashamed but you must go back and say what is this families have died they have lost loved ones simply because people could not hear 
the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days the spirit speaketh expressly expressly God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word that he has appointed heir over all things God is still speaking speaking to men and women and by speaking is not just you need to know you need to pray that God purifies your dreams some of us our dreams have been hijacked by forces let me tell you many things God wanted to tell you in dreams but there are powers that have hijacked the dreams to the point that now you don't even trust it yet dreams and visions it says I have multiplied visions I have spoken in similitudes even by the prophets these are all spiritual channels of prophetic communication let's use one more minute to speak that the blood of God the blood of Jesus speaks over your dreams over your discernment and say Lord I crush the voice of wickedness let there be a purification of the dreams of the vision a purification I cause manipulations of dreams and visions by the gates of hell confusing men confusing women confusing men of God confusing destinies we crush it in the name of Jesus major camps Christian camps in this nation that belong to the fathers of faith I've had the privilege to be there to walk around the length and breadth and being in those places I said Kai it is good to hear God it's good to hear God I've seen the areas in my life where I had God and I've seen the excellency and the blessings of the results in my own life and in effect the life of others. Are we together now? We have a series. This is just an introduction. But please let me challenge you. When you go back, especially this issue of hearing God. Do you know why many people are small in our generation? I will tell you why. Because we follow instincts. Instincts. Brain work. Oh, this is A, B, C. This is E, F, G. God does not take away your intelligence. But you see, a spiritual man, the Bible says that you do not know the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it is going or where it is coming. He says, so is one who is led by the Spirit. You need an experience of a hearing ear and a seeing eye. There are encounters I have had and God has spoken to me through them. I will die believing it. If I get to heaven and I find out I'm wrong, I will apologize with all humility. But for now, they have become my convictions. They drive my life. There is no gate of hell that sustains the power to derail that focus because of the power of what was heard and seen if you do not hear the voice of God one day you will leave ministry if you do not hear the voice of God one day you will look at your wife and say are you sure you were supposed to be the one I will marry or you look at your children 
you will look at your loved ones one day you will just commit suicide out of frustration but i know whom i believed and i am persuaded father tonight we thank you you have granted us access to know that there are unsearchable riches in christ there are systems of advantage that you have designed that when we walk in them our lives become invincible lord i cry tonight i have introduced this deep mystery that you have shown me to your people in the simplest form possible lord i pray that you proceed with the quickening of these teachings grant unto your dear people access even to deeper understanding of these things lord that on the strength of these truths we will rise like an edifice and bring you glory and compel our generation to do same we thank you for your grace tonight we love you for the abundance of your hand upon our lives in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you please be seated a few minutes and we're out of here dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.